Mr. Richmond, this is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 9.1 Lesson Summary. In Unit 9, we're going to start our study of circles in geometry. Um, and our first section here isn't, isn't the most exciting. I mean, we're really just going to expose you to a lot of vocabulary that you need to be aware of in circles. Um, and although you're not solving specifically um, a whole lot of problems, it's not really complex in that way, um, if you don't know the vocab for circles and for some of the things we're doing with circles, you're kind of dead in the water to start. So you really have to have this vocab down um, very, very well to be successful. So very, very important chapter to, to know the definitions of all these terms and know what they look like and be able to recognize them in a diagram. So uh, let's just jump right into it. It'll be a fairly quick session. The center of a circle is the, exactly what it sounds like, the center of a circle It's the point that all your other points on your circle are equidistant from. So if you're making it with a compass, uh, the center's the pointy part of your compass, you set the radius of that compass, and you draw a circle. A chord is a line segment with each point on the circle. So to make this easier for us, what I'll do is as I explain the definition, I'll show you what it would look like on a diagram. So the center of my circle would be A. A chord on my circle would be uh, any a segment with two endpoints on the circle. So DC is a chord because its endpoints are on the circle. Okay, um, and I have it written here as well. DC is a chord. I have that BC is a chord, and that DE is a chord. And you can see that it's a segment connecting two points on the outside of the circle. A secant is a line that actually goes through the circle at two points, exactly two points. So it's kind of like a chord. All secants create a chord. Um, in, the, in the circle, but the secant itself is the line that goes through it. So DE is a secant. If AC went through and extended forever, it would be a secant. DC could be a secant if it, again, extended all the way through with arrows. But as it's drawn right now, only DE is actually a secant. A tangent is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. It comes in real close, skins the edge of the circle at exactly one single point, um, and extends on. So really just kind of, your circle kind of lays against that line. That's how you can think of that. So FG in my diagram is a tangent, and the point of tangency, which is the point of intersection for a circle and tangent line, is where that tangent line crosses the circle. So point C in my diagram is a point of tangency for the tangent line FG. Diameter, which you've probably heard before, you've probably heard both radius and diameter before, but just to make sure, a diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. So BC is a chord, but it's a diameter as well because the chord itself passes right through the center of the circle. There's my diameter. A radius goes from the center of the circle to the outside. So AC is a radius, AB is a radius, AE is a radius. And you probably already know this from previous courses, but the radius is always equal to one half the diameter. Okay, new to you for sure in this chapter will be some of the angle rules here with circles. Um, the first type of angle we're going to deal with is a central angle. It's called a central angle because its vertex is in the center of the circle. It's formed at the center of the circle. The center point of the angle is the center of the circle. So BAE is a vertex angle. Um, CAE is a vertex angle. Okay, those are the two you see in this diagram. Um, again, they're central angles because they're formed from the middle of the circle. We also have something called an inscribed angle, which is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So rather than the center um, vertex being in the center, it's on the edge. So DCB is an inscribed angle. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have EDC is an inscribed angle, and you can see how the vertex is coming along uh, the outside. Now, also new will be arcs, okay? And if you imagine that the circumference of the circle, you can see that here, not imagine, but the circumference of circles is the distance around, so this is the circumference of the whole circle. Um, an arc is when you're talking about the circumference of just a portion of the circle. So an arc could just be D to C. Okay, the symbols I use for arcs, are here. You just basically make a little kind of RP looking shape over the two vertices that are connecting it. So I have arc DC. So that's what is an arc. It's any unbroken part of the circumference of the circle. 
Now I can also have what we call major arcs and minor arcs. A major arc is, a largest, is the largest arc formed by a secant in a circle. Kind of sounds confusing that way. Easier definition. And a major arc is any arc greater than half the size of a circle. Okay, and we tend to use three vertices to describe those. So you'll see here when I wrote my major arcs, they were BDE, DCE, and EBC. So B, D, to E. It's almost the entire circle. That's a major arc. Okay? D, C, E. D to C to E. Again, that's at least more than half, so that's a major arc. And E to B to C. Again, more than half the circle. It's a major arc. Minor arcs, inversely, will be then ones that are less than half the size of the circle. So we already talked about a few, but DC is a minor arc, DB is a minor arc, BE is a minor arc, and EC is a minor arc. And that's why those tend to usually only use two variables to describe it. And lastly, a semicircle. You've probably heard that before, semi meaning half, so it's half a circle um, when we're talking about arcs. So if you can identify your diameter, then you're able to identify your semicircle. Arc CEB is a semicircle, and arc BDC is a semicircle. Okay? Make sure you can do all this vocab. One of the first parts of your homework, if your uh, teacher having you work on a skill book, is to identify all this stuff in the diagram. Super important problem to be able to do um, to really be able to have any success in this chapter. Um, and in the chapter, you're going to learn a lot of rules. You're going to learn you know, how to calculate an inscribed angle given arcs how to find arcs given angle measures, both inscribed and central, rules with tangent lines and radiuses. Um, there's a lot of properties that are involved here with the circle. So um, start off right by knowing the vocab really, really well. All right, thank you and good luck.